guys, what's going on? George here with another Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to talk basic Photoshop stuff for people just getting started with Photoshop or wanting to learn a little bit more about Photoshop or even just having a better understanding of Photoshop. And today we're going to talk about layers and layer masks. So I've got a photo here. This is this is Josh Eppard, uh, the drummer from Coheed and Cambria. I shot him, oh, this has got to be about a year and a half ago now. And this was in a service lift outside of the room that they had for their rehearsal. Uh, I was supposed to be shooting in the rehearsal room. However, there was some filming going on in there. So I brought Josh outside and we found this little service lift and did the shoot there. But what I want to talk about is layers, what layers are, how to use layers, and then how to use layer masks. Because layer masks are one of those things that initially people have a hard time wrapping their head around, but it's a really simple concept. And once you understand how to use them, you can start doing all of your editing in a completely non-destructive fashion. and. I try to do all my editing in a non-destructive fashion. So as you watch any of my tutorial or tip videos, you'll see that I edit non-destructively and hopefully you'll pick up those tips and you will also edit non-destructively because there's no point in editing in a destructive manner. And what I mean by that is editing with things like the eraser tool and erasing bits of your image and you can't fix that once you're done with it. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going a bit too far down the road right now. This is to get you started on that path of non-destructive editing and understanding what layers are. So I've got my photo of Josh here. And over here on the layers palette, you can see we've got a background layer. If you can't see the layers palette, you can just go up into your window, sorry, uh, you can just go up into window and then I normally have go to workspace and I have it set to photography and if even when you tick that you don't have a layers panel over there down here are all the other windows that you can have up you definitely want your layers window so make sure that's ticked and then you will have a layers window over here so we've got a background layer. It's just the image as you see it. There's nothing more to it. We haven't done anything to it. This is just a completely unedited photo straight out of RAW. I do shoot RAW. That'll be a video for another day on processing RAW photos and understanding the differences between RAW and JPEG. But anyways, that's all that's been done to this. This has been processed from RAW and put into Photoshop as a background layer. So first, let's try to understand what layers are because it is the basis of how Photoshop works. So if I were to just duplicate this layer, and you can do that in a number of different ways. I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts, so I'm going to tell you the keyboard shortcut. And that would be Command-J on a Mac or Control-J on a PC. And all that's done is created a new layer that's exactly the same as our background layer on top of the background layer. Now the best way to visualize this is imagine that you have this picture on a piece of paper and then you print out another copy and you put that on top of that piece of paper. That is exactly what's just happened here. We have two pieces of paper with the exact same image on it stacked on top of each other. You can't see the bottom one because the top one is on top and covering it up because it is an exact duplicate of the one below it. That in a nutshell is layers and how Photoshop works. I mean, we can keep doing that. We can duplicate this again and we're going to have a third layer on top. All we're going to see because we've just duplicated the bottom layer twice, we're just going to see the same thing, but we're only going to see this top layer and nothing below it. I can make these not visible by just clicking the little eyedropper thing and nothing's changed because there is nothing below them. To show you this in a little bit more detail, let's delete those. I'm gonna duplicate the background layer one more time. So we have Command J just to duplicate that layer. I'm just gonna take a brush, any old brush, 
with black and I'm just gonna draw a little smiley face. Well, I don't have my opacity up very high. I'm just gonna draw a smiley face here. So you can see on this layer now, we've got a smiley face. But because it's a duplicated layer of the background one, when we do this, the smiley face goes away. Because all we've done, we've duplicated the background layer and we've drawn a smiley face on it. Again, visualize this as if you've printed out two copies of this photo, you drew a smiley face on one, and you put that one on top of the other one. That's exactly what we've done here. And if we do that again, so let's say we print out a third copy, but we print out a copy with the smiley face. So we're gonna duplicate that layer. Now we're gonna draw a little sun over here, right? So we've got a little sun over here. Now what we've got here is three different versions of the same photo all stacked on top of each other. So if we were to toss this one in the bin, we lose the sun, but we keep the smiley face. And then if we toss this one in the bin, we're just left with our blank beginning layer. That's all fine and a reasonable way to do it. The problem with doing things that way is that we've taken the background image and then drawn on it. And then we've taken that image and basically printed out another copy, put it on top, and then drew on that. Let me just back up for a minute. So the problem with doing things in that way is say we want to move this smiley face now. We, we can't because it's now on this layer here. And if I just toggle that on and off, you can see the smiley face is staying there. And that's because we've printed out another copy of that and then drawn on it. So the smiley face is fixed onto this layer with the sun. If we got rid of the layer with the sun, then we could do something with the smiley face. But because we wrote on the background image and then we printed it out again by making a duplicate copy and putting that on top, we can't go back and change this without going back a few steps. The way around that, whenever you're just doing something like <clears throat> cloning out parts of a photo that you don't want, or if you're a graphic designer or whatever it is you want to do, and you just want to add something on top of a layer, is to create a blank layer to do it. And you can create a new layer by either going down here and then hitting your new layer button, which is going to create a new completely blank layer. I'll come to that in a minute. Or you can go up here to layer, new, and then just layer. And that's going to create a new blank layer for you. But what I mean by blank layer is there is absolutely no data in this layer at all. If we turn off the background layer, you will see it's just blank. Photoshop by default gives us this little checkerboard pattern to let us know that there's nothing there, that it's a transparent layer. What that allows us to do is I can now draw on that layer, draw our smiley face back in up here, and then say I wanna add in that sun again. Well, what I would do is create another new layer, and then I'll go over here and I'll just draw in a nice little sun. Now that looks good. It looks exactly the same as how we had it before. The difference is because we've done these on their own individual layers and we'll rename them just so we can see what we're working with here. We'll name this one smile. We'll name this one sun. So they're on their own separate layers. So what we've done is we've taken our background image, we've printed it off on a printer, then we've taken a piece of transparent paper, printed off a smiley face, put it on top. Then we took another piece of transparent paper, printed off a sun, and put that on top. And what we get is everything is still intact. And so we can look at it and be like, you know what, I don't really like the location of that smiley face. So I'll hit the smiley face layer. Again, I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts. The keyboard shortcut for this would be Command and T. And that will allow us to move the smiley face around. You can also do that by going to edit, transform, and oh, sorry, and free transform. Um, and then that will allow you to move it around anywhere you want. We can also do that with the sun. We can say, right, I don't like where the sun's at, command T. 
move the sun around into a new position. You can also decide that you want it smaller, bigger, turned, doesn't matter what it is that you want to do with it. The point is that since we've done it on its own individual transparent layer, we can move it around without affecting the base image below it. This is very important for when you get into a bit more advanced things with Photoshop, such as compositing people onto different backgrounds, replacing sky and skies and photos, adding birds, whatever it is you want to do. This is the basic understanding you've got to have regarding layers in Photoshop. And again, I'm a big fan of repetition, so I'll repeat it again. Think of layers as stacks of paper on top of each other. The background layer is your original printed out photo. And then what we've done here is we've printed out new things on transparent paper. And then that allows us to move it around and still seeing through to the things that are below. Understanding that concept applies to everything that you do in Photoshop and doing it in a non-destructive fashion. You could easily watch tutorials or read books or see things that will tell you to do editing on a specific layer, but I would never do that because you can't go back and change. So now that we've got that basic understanding of the layers, let's do a little bit of editing on this. And I'm not going to do the normal sort of editing that I do because that is for another video. And I think there's another video where I talked about how I add contrast to photos. But first, let's do let's do that. Let's add a little contrast to this photo. So what you want to do is create a new layer, but we're going to create what's called an adjustment layer. And the best way to think about an adjustment layer, well, let's do one first and then I'll sort of explain because each one has their own nuances and different ways to think about them. But what we're going to do here is we're going to create a curves layer and you can either do that by going down to this little button here which says create new fill or adjustment layer. And if you click on that, it's going to give you a range of different layers that you can create. You can also go up into layer new, oh, sorry, new adjustment layer and then you'll have again a range of different ones that you can, you can select. You'll also have up here your adjustments visible and again that should be ticked visible underneath window because this is far easier. If you just go up here and we can see curves, we'll click curves and that's going to create a curves adjustment layer for us on top of our original image. Now everything we do on this layer is going to affect everything below it. That is also an important thing to understand. Whenever you have an adjustment layer, it will affect everything below it, nothing above it. To show you what I mean, let's just take this and we're just going to drag this down just so it's really dramatic. You can see the difference. You can see we've done something to this, right? Now let's grab a, let's say a hue and saturation layer. Say we decided now that this is far too saturated. We'll drag the saturation slider down and you can see that it's desaturated everything. This is far too dark and far too rubbish, really, but it's just to show you the point that, of how these layers work. So the curves layer is basically adjusting the contrast of the image below it, and then we've taken another piece of paper, put it on the top, one that takes away the saturation. Now what it won't do is affect things above it. So let's click on our hue and saturation layer and just to show you, we'll create a new layer, we'll grab our brush, this time we'll do it in white just so it's visible on this dark background and we're gonna draw back in our smiley face here, right? Our hue and saturation layers, if we get rid of them, you can see it's, it's not doing anything to our smiley face because it's on top. Of everything else and it's on its own transparent layer so our hue and saturation and all that stuff isn't affecting it and actually I'm gonna change the color of that so that we can see in the hue and saturation the effect that it will have so we'll grab like a really really vibrant blue and we'll draw back in our smiley face 
So again, you can see hue and saturation not affecting the blue. If we were to move that smiley face layer down below the curves in the hue and saturation, you can see it's now turned a bit purple. And the reason for that is we did a really dark curves adjustment, which was going to make it a much darker blue. And then we did the hue and saturation where we dragged the saturation slider all the way down. You can see as we do this, it's affecting our smiley face. Now if we move it back up to the top, so it's above the hue and saturation layer, we grab our hue and saturation slider and we move it around, you can see it's not affecting the smiley face because it is above the hue and saturation adjustment layer. That's a very important point to understand because as you edit, you might want to only do things to certain parts of the photo in the steps that you edit. And so with this, I wanted to adjust the curves and then the saturation and then add my smiley face. And so I would do those things in that order. Now it doesn't matter too much which order you do the curves and hue and saturation in. It does, and I know I might get comments about that, but that, that's another topic for another day. All I'm talking about right now is the or is the layers and understanding how they affect things below them. So again, these are only affecting things below it. Now there is another thing that you can do to only affect certain parts of a photograph, and that is called a layer mask. This is the part that I think some people have a hard time initially grasping. But once someone explains it to you in an easy to understand way and you get it, it's, it's, it's easy. And it's the most amazing tool, in my opinion, that Photoshop has to offer because understanding and using layer masks allow you pretty much unlimited possibilities in the way that you edit. So let me give you an example. So let's go back again and we're going to create, well, no, <clears throat> first, yeah, well, okay, sorry. Let's create our curves adjustment layer. Now you, you've seen up here, this is where we adjust the curves and I'll do a, a more in detail tutorial on understanding curves and using curves and all that stuff. But you've seen this bit over here next to this icon is the adjustments. So this is where if you click that and then you have your properties panel open, it will show you where you make your adjustments for that layer. Next to it is a white box. And whenever you create a new adjustment layer, this box is always white by default. That is your layer mask. Now the best way to explain a layer mask is imagine what we've been talking about already is you've printed out your initial photo and now you've printed out a black piece of paper and so we're gonna fill our layer mask here with black and to do that you'd have it highlighted make sure your color swatches are default and you can do that by hitting D on your keyboard and then X will switch them around so we've got black as our foreground color if you hold down alt and then the backspace key it will fill that layer with black. And to show you exactly what that does, let's create, uh, let's see, let's create a stamp layer, which, no, sorry, we'll just duplicate the layer. We'll create a layer mask for it, which you can do by going down to this little camera looking icon. And then again, we're gonna fill it with black the same way that we did before. If we got rid of the background layer, now you can see that we're not seeing anything. And this is because we've got a, we've basically taken a black piece of paper and put it on top of our original photograph. So we've got our curves layer now and we've got it filled in with black. I think the best way to explain how the layer masks work is imagine now we've taken our background image, we've printed it out, we've set it down on the table. Now we've printed off one of those nice curve pieces of paper that we had before and we have put it down on top. But this time we've painted that curves layer black so we can't see anything through it. 
Now, anytime, so anytime we make an adjustment here, so if I go over here and I do what we did earlier and I just drag this down, you can see nothing has happened. And that's because we've got a black curves layer. We can't see through the curves layer. So think of the layer mask as a sort of window. And right now it's painted black. But if you want to see through it, you need to punch some holes into it. And the way we would punch holes in our layer mask here is by painting white. So the layer mask, you can only paint in two colors on the layer mask, black and white. Think about black as you're painting black over something so you can't see through it. And then think of white as you're punching holes through that black so that you can see it. So we've got our black curves adjustment layer sitting on top of our background image so we can't see anything that we've done. We've dragged this down considerably. This should be a really dark and oversaturated and nasty looking image, but it doesn't look like it because we can't see through it. But let's punch a hole into it. So in order to do that, you want to make sure that you're clicked on the layer mask. You want to grab a brush and we're going to put it on white and we're just going to poke a hole. We'll just poke a hole, say, right here. Now that's really dark, and that's not the effect of me painting black onto the image. That's the effect of me punching a hole in our layer mask. And just to show you more, is I'll drag it over here. And you can see now I'm just scratching a line into our layer mask so that we can see through the curves adjustment. And we can show you now as we make adjustments on our curves, it's only affecting the area that we punched a hole into our layer mask. That's probably the easiest way to understand that is to think that you got your layer mask. Anything that you put black on the layer mask is going to stop you seeing through that layer. Anything you put white is allowing you to see through that layer. So again, if we were to take our layer mask this time and make it white, so now it's a completely transparent piece of paper with some curves adjustments on it. So everything that we do here now is going to be affecting the entire image because we haven't marked anything off with black. We haven't painted any black areas that we don't want to see through. So if we were to say we wanted to darken up, or sorry, brighten up just Josh and not the... Uh, service lift that he's in, I'd make this general um, curves adjustment. I would go to my layer mask now, and now this time I'm going to paint where I don't want to see. So I'm going to do this very rough just to show you the effect. So everywhere I'm painting now, I'm essentially painting black onto our transparent piece of paper so that we can't see any of the adjustments we've made on that part. Again, this is very rough. It's not, it's not meant to be very good. It's meant to just show you how this works. So you can see from clicking on and off on our curves adjustment that only a bit of the image is being affected. You can see little bits I've missed. Um, and that's because black doesn't allow us to see through and white does allow us to see through. To show you that in another way is let's duplicate this layer. No, sorry, let's not duplicate this layer. Let's make a black and white layer. Let's do some really bad color popping <laughs> to really sort of hopefully drive home this point. So we're just going to leave this as default. We're just going to create a generic Photoshop black and white. And you can see again, it's because it's an adjustment layer, it's already got a white layer mask, which is the same as just putting a sort of transparent piece of paper on top of our background image so that we've put it on and it's black and white but anything we do on this black and white layer we're going to see. Anything we paint black on our layer mask we're going to take away. So let's say we want to make his shirt because it was nice and red. Let's say we want to make his shirt visible and this is going to be very quick. It's not meant to be very good. All you would do is get on your layer mask, grab a black brush and just paint there and you'll see we can bring back the red of his shirt. 
because what we're doing is we're telling the curves layer, or sorry, the black and white layer, right, I want you to be black and white, except for in this spot. And so now we've got black and white photo with a red shirt. Let's make his hat, although his hat's gray actually, so it's not gonna really matter. Um, what was something else that had some color? Uh, besides the service list, there really wasn't anything, was there? Um, we could make his arms because they're going to be skin colored. So, I mean, we're telling the black and white layer, right, I like you black and white. I want, I want to use you, but I don't want you to be in these places. And so by painting black on the layer mask, we're stopping the black and white layer from going through to the bottom layer. And that's pretty much it. Layers are essential to understanding Photoshop and understanding how to work non-destructively. I will be doing a lot more videos coming up and really focusing on some basic Photoshop stuff to then get us up to more advanced things. But understanding layers and working on individual layers is key to making Photoshop work for you and make yourself not hate Photoshop because it's easy to hate Photoshop if you do things in a destructive fashion or you don't quite understand what it is you're trying to achieve. But understanding that layers are basically bits of paper stacked on top of each other and all those different bits of paper do different things. And then layer masks are basically taking bits of paper and saying, right, I don't want you to go through to this one so I don't want to be able to see you through and by doing that you paint black because black doesn't allow you to see so if you have any questions at all please leave them in the comments below I'm more than happy to answer any questions hopefully this made a lot of sense it was the way that it was sort of explained to me oh God, a long time ago um, but once I got that about layer masks uh, the, the possibilities are endless what you can do with Photoshop so anyways if you like the video please give it a big fat thumbs up if you're new to the channel and this is the first video you've seen of mine please subscribe I'm gonna be doing a lot more I want to help you get awesome at Photoshop so please thumbs up subscribe and I'll see you later <laughs>